ず So, we discussed the first stage of the Battle of the Battle Rifles. That's true, Battle of the Bad Bad Battle Rifles. Battle of the Bad Battle Rifles. Uh, I understand with your choice for the Bad Battle Rifles, you're going to bring us into the modern era. That's true. This is uh, certainly a modern offering. Now, this is one that it would seem ruffles some feathers whenever you whenever you pronounce it as being a bad gun. Now there isn't there isn't necessarily as much to complain about with this one. Are you sure? <laughs> there isn't as much to complain about this one as with some bad guns. Uh, the badness of this gun really has a lot to do more with its manufacture than the specific examples of the guns themselves. But I, it's an interesting web of of badness the whole way down. Of course, the gun that I'm talking about is the SCAR. The SCAR-17 or SCAR-H or whatever whatever name you want to call it. Sort of a black standardization in naming to some extent. Now, this one, of course, is not the, it's not the normal color one. The normal color one, fun fact, not a lot of people know this. Uh, they call it, the, the community calls it sort of flat, dark earth, but that's not actually what FN calls it. Uh, FN calls it, uh, you know, it's, it's their PC color which in, in Belgian means poop camo. Camo. And, and it's because the gun is actually shit, and if you dropped it in poo, it would blend in perfectly, which is why they call it. Well, it's because it was designed for the service crews for porta potties <laughs> that, That's true. And it's perfectly suited. It's perfectly that's, suited. But that's, a, that's about the extent of its suitedness. So yeah, the, the extent of its good suitedness is the, the, the Porto uh, pooper cleanup crew. It's excellent for that task. Uh, but anyway, aside from that, it's... On the surface, I'd say it's a very vulnerable intention. Uh, everything here is, I would say, really well intentioned. It's a very, it's a certain modernization of the AR-18, right? So, so it uses an extruded aluminum upper, which on its own, it's a good idea. At least to me, it's not, it's not a bad idea, but it, sh- it should be dirt cheap, right? Because you're yes. saving your, you know, with the AR-15, the, you know, the, the expense of it, which at this point has paid for itself a million times over yeah. with many of them are out there. The aluminum, near-net aluminum forgings are really expensive to do right. Yep. Uh, but once you have it tuned in, though. But what, 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 right. you, once it's tuned in, whoa, you, yep. print, you print money. You right. actually just have a money printer. I think there's like six or seven forging houses that have the dies, and they just make parts for everyone. And all, all day long, right? Right. Uh, with extruded aluminum uppers, you save so much of that tooling, right? Making aluminum extrusion is like... All you're doing, you're dealing with a two-dimensional shape. Right. Right. So you're dealing with a two-dimensional cross-section, and then you have a machine that just shits out it just squishes, lines of this. It squishes aluminum past, past, the, past, past the die. So this gun, at one point, like, ass to mouth, was part of, like, ten others, and they just cut them off, yep. and then do finished machining. It's a really good idea. It's, it's a very, very cheap machining... Uh, manufacturing process. Right. However, this gun doesn't end up being cheap at all. <laughs> uh, you know, at some point in time, of course, it's another one of those guns that price fluctuates, fluctuates. some and, and costs you know, thousand. You can expect to pay anywhere from two to three thousand dollars ordinarily for for one in, yep. in good shape. Now that's uh, that's kind of that's kind of steep when you compare it to you know contemporaries. You know, we, we talked about the M14. You can get a really good, like an actual pretty good M14 for three grand. Uh, you can get an AR-10 that's like shoots laps, laps. around this thing for three grand. Uh, I mean, just but you can get this thing for three grand, right? <laughs> or this thing for right. three grand. And again, on the surface, again talking about smart intentions. The use of a polymer lower. It makes Not sense because stupid. they've made the whole recoil system contained in the upper. Why wouldn't you? That's really, right. And you know who else did that? Stoner with the... Well, I don't know that Stoner directly designed that. He may not have. But the AR-180B, right? right? They eventually realized the AR-180 does not need a metal lower. Right. No point in it. Just do a, a polymer Yeah, it was based lower. off a flawed premise where they thought that... Right. You know, it would be... Or in polymers at the time were in their yeah. infancy. Whereas here, this, it's not, yeah. a, not a bad choice. And so the 180B is... Kind of a good gun. I like that, it. That no one likes. Right. Uh, but this is... Uh, uh, let's drive in a little more, because people who defend this thing will sit there and say... They'll talk about the form factor, right? And, of course, what are they talking about? It's an AR-18, just like right. every other... <laughs> it's a 308 AR-18, but yeah. bad. But 
it, what are they really talking about when they say the forward factor? They're talking about the fact that the stock falls. That's it. That's what they're talking about. Because yep. what else does it do that's novel? Nothing. And is the fact that the stock folds good? Yes. Is the fact that it functions with the stock folded good? Yes. Uh, uh, it's a good fact. Okay. Uh, so, like, on its own, in a vacuum. Right. Um, is it necessary? No. <laughs> is um, it useful? Was it 308? No. <laughs> no. But here's the thing. We, when we looked at the G36, which is dog trash, what would happen when you yanked the stock out? It would snap open. It would snap open. You have to mean it. And that's not this particular gun. Yep. It's a design flaw. It's just you, it's, Look at the tiny little teeth on this nylon. Like, like if, if you were to lock that stock out and then hold the gun over your knee, you can break it. Which, yep. of course, right, that, that's abuse. And should guns be designed to handle abuse like that? No, they shouldn't need to have to be. But at some rate, if I'm paying $3,000 for the thing, that stock could better be able to take me, like, putting my weight on it. And also, yeah, at least with the, you know, the G36 locks up positively. This does not. This is not. And it. so not only do you have an issue with the lockup at the receiver, you've got this dipshit Ugg boot thing, which everyone loves so much. Adjusting this thing feels like you're breaking it the whole time. That said, does it let you, because a lot of you guys don't know this. I don't care if you know it or not, but Ivan and I are oversized, oversized human beings. It's nice to be able to bring it all the way out right. and get it, get it comfy, right? But it feels like you're going to break it. Here, pull that. Right. Do that. Do that part. Yeah. It grinds. <laughs> yeah. I, I've got 3D printed parts that slide nicer than that. Yeah. And of course, you know, even, even with it being that tight, it's just, it it moves. You've got three The, the whole thing of still moves, even with it being that tight, which is... I'm going to say inexcusable. Right, three points of movement. And the then stock. You, you've got the, you, the, the, the. I think this was borrowed from the ACR, the whole stock setup, the cheek riser thing. I was. Thank you. I was just about to go there. The the cheek riser on its own isn't a bad isn't bad conceptually. The way they pulled it off is terrible. Where once you extend the thing to its full length of pull, uh, you can't you can't really get on that the way you'd need to. So you can't have good length of pull and a good cheek weld. You can have one or the other with the way this is designed. Yeah. If you want to look at the way that this should be designed properly, it's like the spur, you know, the spur stock did this better, where that thing has to extend at least at least two inches further. So again, that's where my comfortable length of pull is. This is what's comfortable for me. Right. I'm not... And I'm not doing it wrong like either. You got you got to crane your neck, yeah. or or go with a smaller length of pull than you actually need. Or yeah. no, you should not feel stressed when you're aiming a rifle. All right. <laughs> and of course, I shouldn't have my hand there because reciprocating the charging handle in current year. And of course, yeah, 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 yeah. The the scar the scar copers will talk about how oh oh oh, oh but the, just Virgin two doesn't not reciprocating. You can change it without tools. It's true. You can. But, uh, you and know, I think it's like almost completely incompatible, <laughs> right? These the, the, the same the same people who will defend, oh, but there's the Gen Two and it fixed all of the issues. You know, they'll they'll, they'll, they'll detract from the AR10 by saying that it's oh, it's not it's not modern, it's not fully evolved, it's not standardized. As the scar is like constantly crapping, you know, it's crapped out at least one new version to fix something that should never have been a, a thing. And look at this. Yeah, that's like three thousand three, dollars. Three thousand, and of course, it's just a backup. It's just a backup. It's a backup. It's part of the fucking gun. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's inexcusable. That's that's it's that's it's worse good. than my high point. That's really bad. I didn't even actually. I, I never really looked at this. I didn't know how bad that was. AKs have got better sights. Well, AKs, yeah, I mean, AKs are better in every way. But so. There's not that much mechanically to shit on here because well, mechanically it's there, good. There, there is at least one thing. The, the fire control? I, well, I was going to say, the polymer lower, really smart. Everything they put into the polymer lower, it was mind-numbingly stupid. Right. Oh, and so we've got this... You make your own polymer lower, right? You're going for military contracts. The SCAR-16, AR mags, right? Yep. So naturally, the SCAR-17 would be an AR-10 mag, right? SR-25 mags. You could make it take foul mags. Why not? Well, they did. That's a foul mag stamping. 
that's not the compatible. Bug and an AR style latch. Yep. And it's bad. That's stupid. Those mags are like fifty dollars yeah. each. It's, it's horrible. I think it's sixty bucks. It's bad. And with this, why? I think so. It can sit flat. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's because they insisted on using a foul mag. Like they, they could have used SR25. But I there's so many good 308 mags that they could have used or just used a modified version of. Or like, fuck, make it rock and lock. Who gives a yeah. shit? Or, or you know what? Do do what do what HK does, where you can make it sort semi rock and lock, where it's got a button and a paddle. They could do it. They could have made it take it G3 mags. Look at how stupid this fire control is. It, it's literally it's an FNC, right? Which was done during a time where we were doing a lot of playing around. And again, you know, th- this this is one of those guns where its fanboys will defend spending like you know another two thousand dollars on top of what the gun costs to make it good. And they're like, well, it's a good gun because you can spend as much as three other guns to make it good, which isn't true, right? That, that that means that it's a bad gun that needs a lot of help to get along. And there are different versions of these that will you know, different versions of the lowers that you can buy that take. Uh, standard SR25 or AR10 pattern mags, DPMS mags, and take AR fire control groups and have all of these you know amenities that sh- really, really should have been there from the beginning. And really, the only reason you can point to that they weren't is because FN was chasing military contracts and did not care about the civilian market. Right. Because anybody who's making something for the civilian market knows you, may- you should make it take mags that exist or have the mags be cheap if they're proprietary and then should take like the AR-15 drop and trigger market is massive. Mm-hmm. You don't even, you don't have to design a good trigger because they'll put their own in there, the, whatever it is that they prefer. I just hate this it's, fire control it's dead, so it's, much. It's just so it's just so weird. Look at that. Look at that hammer. Why? And you know the the, the as far the, the Scar Seventeen was designed a little bit before, you know, good ambidextrous stuff came to AR. The ambidextrous stuff is okay, but you know it's got ambi mag release, which is all right. But not having ambi bolt release on an all polymer lower was weird, especially because you know they're not using AR fire control groups, so they don't have to worry about you know, how far forward the hammer needs to come because right. they're using this stupid thing that's got a dog leg on it. Why? They, they, didn't, they don't have to worry about getting around it so much. So why wouldn't they have the the LMT that has the you know, they, you know, they've got this same thing but mirrored over here and you can push it to do the bolt release? It's, it's weird to me that they wouldn't have ambi bolt release. I will say the first thing I did when I got this gun is I switched the charging handle from the left side to the right because that's where men put it. That's true, like an 8K. Yeah. This is retarded. It's it's really not good. It's still short stroke. Yep. But they made it long stroke length. It's like short, long stroke. Why would they do this? I assume it was a proposition of adding mass but still maximizing travel, which, okay, that's that's commendable. Or just reduce your gas. Right. And, and that seems to be a problem that... you know, Everything but the AR-15 really seems to have this problem of uh, you know, being able to run with low gas reliably is hard, and then ARs do it so well. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is because the AR system for the gas is pretty darn close to sealed, or at least can yeah. be made to be really darn close to sealed and still run fine. Whereas something like this... Well, not to dog on AKs much because right, it's a completely different system. But with AKs, there's gas that can slip by the piston as soon as the piston starts moving. So you've right. got to overgas them some to get them to run reliably. If you've got like a KNS adjustable piston, you'll notice like you can get it set so the gun barely cycles, except sometimes it just won't cycle. Yeah. So you've got to set it like two or three clicks above just barely cycles to ensure it always, always cycles. cycles. Whereas with ARs, you can get that thing gassed so the, the bolt carrier doesn't bottom out and it will just run like that with a really good build. If there's one lesson that you guys take from this series, it's that everything is the AR-18. <laughs> like, everything modern is. Again. <laughs> we, I think we were joking recently that um, the AR-18 was Stoner's best idea that he never made money off of. Oh, and that, and then if, he, if he did, he'd have a bigger ranch. Right. He'd have died with an even larger estate. Yeah. But, uh, it's a it's a great mechanism. This is a retarded and oh look, adding mass, I don't think that was their concern. Yeah. Now that you mentioned now that you Yeah, because they they hogged this out for weight savings assuredly. So that's that's weird. So so I I, I don't know if, if you if we talked much about this this story, but one of the one of the buddies on, on Twitter that I'm friends with on Twitter. The uh, Twitter Birdman? The Twitter Birdman. Uh he he ran into this issue and a lot of other FN owners have run into it where 
the warranty information for the scar. Uh, and of course, these scars, I assume this one's made in the U.S. I don't think there's any that Belgian made scars that are here, unless they come through with the secret this ingredient. Is... But Maker's Marks are, is it? Yep. Is an early one. And that's the important mark. Marks. Okay. So, so it, it may be a bigger issue with ones that have at least more U.S. made parts on them. But the, the warranty on these guns is voided if you use them with a suppressor. Which is weird, right? Because it's a modern gun. with Which has a gas cut off. Right. These were... Which allegedly works. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> there you go. It's going. It's going. <laughs> it doesn't want to click. Fuck it. I'll leave it right where it was. Very cool. So it's a... It's a modern. Ow. It's a modern gun. It's made after suppressors were more mm-hmm. or less common, right? But it has issues with you void a warranty with using a suppressor. So I, I had a buddy who put a suppressor on his, and it ended up cracking. I, I believe in the in the cam groove down ended, there. Ended up cracking, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know, of course, obviously not safe to use at that right. point. He contacted FN. FN asked him if he'd been using a suppressor. He said yes. FN says we're not fixing it. He asked if he could get a new part. They said yeah, maybe in like six months we'll have extras. Uh so, if that happened with like a one-off custom build gun, you know what everybody would say? Bad, bad gun, builder. bad yeah. gun, bad company, bad. Don't bad ever this, buy from bad them. This, yeah. Never buy from. What happened whenever IO Inc. made AKs that did this? Like they just broke under things that shouldn't break them. Everybody wanted a fucking dog pile of them. Everybody hated them. Whenever FN does this, people with the scars will just carry water from like, oh, you should move, you should spend like another thousand dollars on. You have the FN suppressor, adjustable yeah. gas plug, and you need to do this and this special system just for this. That shouldn't be a thing, no. right? What, what what if Daniel Defense did that with their ARs? Like you put a suppressor on their AR, and they're like, oh no, <laughs> um, FN, no, you broke it's it. It's not rated for too much weight on the front. Uh, no, no, we won't fix that. Because you know, there's significantly more force on the bolts, it sh- it, the chance of shearing a lot yeah. is much more likely. You think Sons of Liberty Gunworks with their, you know, their sort of more boutique thing? You know, Daniel Defense does business with the military. I don't think SO, SOL, yeah. Jub, GW, DW, DW, the soldiers, does. boys. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you know, they're, they're so upfront about their warranty. They're like, if you break it, if, if if you fell on your gun when you were doing some cool guy stuff. We'll fix it. Yeah. You think these guys would? They won't fix it if you use it as it should be intended. And then, of course, the weirdest thing about all that is you know, the, 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 the the gravy seals use these things. And everybody, you know, the effing scar. Well, the, the gravy seals use them. Right. The, like, they, they buy a hundred of everything. Right. Yeah, they've got MPXs. Have yeah. they used them? I doubt it. <laughs> they, they, they've got... Them. They, they also, they've got 1911s. Do you think they're you know, using Here, I've got to do something real quick. You know, the, Ben from Flux. Right. He's a fan of us. Yep. We love him. The Navy SEALs bought the Flux Raider. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> they're not going to... They're not using They're not it. going to use it to help <laughs> yeah. the bad guys. Yeah. But maybe they'll train with it. They'll see yeah. what merits it has. Yeah. Especially because it seems like the Army is going to do a horrible thing and adopt... Like, as a submachine yeah. gun, adopt the M17 with a stock on it. Retarded. Horrible. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... You know, the the yeah the people will point to like the Navy SEALs adopted the CQB version. Mm-hmm. Okay, first off, the short barrel 308 yeah. is like okay, come on, yeah, John, really. Like, congratulations, you've discovered 760 <laughs> by 39. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, that, that, the that, issue there, by the way, is that 308 needs to have a long barrel to it, develop it, it, energy. Just, it was a designed around a slow burning powder. Ideal yeah. barrel length is like a 24 or 26, yeah. and of course, coming down to 20, you've already lost a significant amount of velocity. At 18, it's like. Eh, at 16, you are competing with 760. Right. Or at 16, it doesn't make sense to be using yeah. 308 anymore because you're making a lot of fireball. And then, like, down around 12. You, you that said, we both have 8 inch 308s. Yeah. It's a joke. <laughs> yeah. We, we, <laughs> it's a literal noise. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, once you get down to like 10 inches, the muzzle energy from 760 by 39, which has a faster burning powder, yep. is, I mean, it's within like, like a, uh, maybe a hundred foot pounds of 308. So you put up with all that 308 expense yeah. and bulk just for you to be getting like none of that, you know, that extra power. You turn it, you turn a full power cartridge into an intermediate because 308 is bad for that. But it still kicks. Right. So Which the, is the weird thing. So the, the compact scars, really, really bad gun. And that, you know, those are the sort of the ones, maybe the Navy SEALs, I'm sure they do have some long ones, but. You know, they've sort of used the, the short ones. But there's pictures of them with the short ones with suppressors on them. I am guarantee you they don't have Captain Jerkoff McSmirkoff's $500 extra super adjustable gas plug system. Right. So I'm sure FN just, like, gives them new carriers as they break or what have you. 
it's just it's mind boggling to me the amount of water that people that you know because a normal thing a non Stockholm syndrome thing to do would be for the people who own these guns to be like hey Ethan that's fucked why yeah. don't you just make the gun run with the suppressor that shouldn't be hard yeah right it's not like we're asking you to like warrant people's reloads you have to which, remember these are the these are the types of people that like remember Ethan recently came out with the like ultra short. Scar. Yeah, they, they came out with like a one of the five five six scars. It's like an eight inch barrel. Yeah, and they were like, and the marketing push was FN collectors yeah. buy this limited edition gun. It, it's like it has no military provenance. It is not. They just literally shortened the yeah. gun and said, "Hey, open your wallet again." Yeah, and then guess what? You little bitches did it. Yeah, you went and bought it. FN is literally just pissing on their yeah. customers. Yeah, because because they know that like these stock. And I don't get it. They're not good. It's not. It's, it's it's light. I guess all all it's got going for it is it's not it's not super heavy. There there are three. Yeah, the scar seventeen, the scar sixteen is too heavy. Yeah. but the scar seventeen is like kind of. There are three oh eights that are heavier. How about that? Yeah, it. The trigger is not horrifying. Yeah, but it's not. It, the, the fact great. that the fact that it should have just taken AR drop. You AR yeah. triggers from the beginning, and you could throw your nice CMC in there and just be done with it. I don't. Why does it have that dog leg? Because guess what? This is right in the middle. Where's the? I'm curious. Oh wait, it's not. Oh my god! Look at the bottom of this bolt. Oh my fucking god! There's no way. I want it to be an optical illusion so bad. Hold on. My fucking god. You know how the AR just has a lug in a pocket? <laughs> We're trying to figure out why the hammer is shaped like an organ. Oh my god. Why? It's actually kind of smart. Okay, let me, oh, let me see if I can smart. figure it out. It's actually kind of smart. I don't hate it. In fact, I kind of like it. Let me see the side fight. I like it. In fact, you could put that in an AR probably, and that'd be good. Okay, so so we, we had a little bit of a, a diversion there because yeah. we, we were we were there trying to figure out why is the hammer so stupid shaped. Yeah. But it, it actually turns out I can't knock this for being a bad gun just for this just for this feature. Uh, so so what this what this little leg on there actually does is you know as as your bolt comes back of course like if you think about just the normal AR15 hammer if the bolt goes so far that then the bolt is behind the hammer it will hit the hammer and can't hump over it uh, with the roller delay guns they like, sort of partway got around this by making the hammers have a certain rounded geometry to them so the carrier can hop over them and the bolt head itself can get on the hammer uh, with an AR you don't want a lot of that happening with an AK it just happens and that's why AK yeah. bolts will hang up sometimes so basically that this little arm completely prevents the hammer face from getting caught on the edge right. of the bolt so, yeah, so this this little extra Douglas yep. rides on the side and you know the hammer wants to run here the extra Douglas yep. runs on there and that lets you get probably an extra inch of travel out of your bolt which from a standpoint of you know, dealing with recoil especially in full power rifles Bolt travel is your buddy. It's not. Okay. The hammer looks dumb as hell. It's a good idea. It's, it's, it, it, it's at the very least, yeah. super noble intent. Yeah. Is there a more elegant way to do it? Yeah. Yeah, in a straight Us line. Using yeah. AR fire control groups? Yeah. Could make it happen. Yeah. And of course, you know, whenever it's whenever it's in the fired position, it's this shape to get around the uh, recoil spring. No. So if you had a an AR Right or, or or something else with the recoil spring in the rear of it, you wouldn't have to have a dog leg. Right. It could just kind of come up and fish them. But so okay, I so I don't hate I don't hate that for that. It's again a noble intent. Is there a better way to do it? Yeah, almost uh, yeah. assuredly. But okay. 
But anyway, the charging handle, and you guys have heard, because this is kind of like a pede- uh, <laughs> pedestrian thing to shit on with the foul, or the foul, the scar, is the fixed charging handle gets in the way, but like, you knew you were designing it for optics. Yeah. And it's right it's, there. It's, it's kind of inexcusable. It's completely inexcusable. And these are the same people who had previously had downswept charging handles and earlier designs and stuff like that. Like, right. they knew better. Uh, you, And then they installed them generally on the left-hand side where, guess what, on most optics are where the screws go. Right. And, you know, th- there's, there's, there's another thing here. Uh, speaking of optics, you can't talk about the SCAR-17 without talking about the other war- you know, warranty bait that this gun brings about. Uh, whereby it's capable, weirdly, weirdly capable, and and actively destroys optics, where it damages why, why, them, why does it do- shakes them off. I've seen a lot of theories. Uh, the one that I believe the most has to do with the fact that it's an extruded aluminum upper, and that you, that it's, it's vibration in the upper itself that gets translated better to the optic by way of you know it's a, it's a thin aluminum tube. It's going to carry vibration really, really well. And you know it's going to carry that out to the rail very easily. Uh, it seems like that's something that, you know, harmonically speaking, you could figure out how to do a better job of. But uh, you know, certainly, I, I, there, there's stories of people just you know having EOTechs break internally. Like think think of EOTechs are meant to be yeah. meant to be pretty. They're terrifying. encased in in a a lot of uh, resin. Right. They're, they're meant to be relatively shockproof. Right. And of course, they had issues with heat shifting that they didn't disclose. Neotech got in a lot of trouble with the military whenever they went to Afghanistan with optics that heat shift. <laughs> and of course, once you zeroed them hot, it was fine, but uh, right. that's, that's sort of then a thing. Then at night, when it gets cold. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> you sure don't want to have to be the guy who learns that. Right. But uh, you know, with, with this thing, if it eats EOTechs, I've heard people talk about ACOGs getting broken on these, and ACOGs you know, are, are meant to be like crayon eater proof. Right. And uh, if this breaks, then that's that's really bad. Uh, I've I, I've talked with people who have had multiple hollow sun red dots, you know, the, the sort of ha- red dots that people have put on fifty cals. They put them on M eighty twos, and they work fine on M eighty twos. And then you put them on this, and they break internally. Where like you turn the the, the windage and elevation screws, and it doesn't move anymore. The thing is broken. I assume I, I just assume it has to be vibration. It has to be harmonic. That that you know the whole upper goes and that gets transferred into the optic that goes <laughs> and it's like a little vibration table every time yeah. you shoot the thing. Alright. But you know that's So that's, here's the thing. All of the component parts of the scar are good. There, there's a lot here that well how, how about this? There's a lot here that isn't bad. The, I would say each, if you take each individual component and you look at it aside from the bolt carrier, <laughs> you go, all right. right. So even down to the fire controls, which we're now like, all right. You take each one on its own, you're like, I get it, I get it, I get it. You take the extruded upper, I get it. Then you put it all together. And they didn't do a very great job. Of it. And it's just Is bad. that the FN break? Yes. It's hideous. It's ugly. It's ugly. It's yeah, no, don't, don't accuse me of shit, guys. Look at that logo. That's, That's gross. Yeah, that, that came with it. Yeah. Is, they did a jam nut. They put a, it's a jam nut on a three thousand dollar rifle. It's just bad. A jam nut on a yeah. three thousand yep. dollar rifle. They sure did. That's uh, that's a choice. And an A two grip. Yeah, the A two grip is almost insulting. Like you telling me they it's couldn't they couldn't just like make a good do one. Something I don't know. Something I I, I, I can't get over the jam nut because I'm I'm thinking of a uh, precision bolt action manufacturers like a. Douglas. Okay, Douglas. Douglas from the Precision Bolt Gun Factory. <laughs> on, on Precision Bolt Guns, they will they will cut your muzzle threads so that the muzzle device, whenever it bottoms out, like you don't need shims, don't need a crush washer, don't need a fucking jam nut on a $3,000 rifle. Whenever it's properly torqued to your you know, 30, 50 foot pounds or whatever, it just perfectly lines up. Like they'll cut the threads to the muzzle device. Insane that that doesn't happen at $3,000. Is that necessary for a military rifle? No, in fact, it's probably pretty dumb. For three thousand dollars, I'm, yeah. I'm offended by the presence of a jam nut. It's three thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm. There's a few things that offend me about this gun. One is the iron sights. Another is the stock. <laughs> yeah, that's that's horrible. We were We're talk- talking like four millimeters there, like which the, would be like twenty minutes. Or worse than that. Yeah. Like with as much as this thing wiggles, especially. I mean, it's got decent sight radius. Yeah. A little, little bit bigger than an AK, but dude. 
That's that's like that, feet of impact. That's, mi- that's missing people. Yeah. Just straight up, like you're, you're shooting the buddy beside him, like a hostage situation, and then you hit the guy like three three doors down. <laughs> Oops, that's so bad. That's but yeah, guys, go in the cope section and tell me how yours is different. Yeah, your, yours does. Yours doesn't do this, and yours do, yours doesn't have a crush washer. And it, yours doesn't have a fucking jam. Oh my god. And the differently anodized aluminum lower piece. Yeah, but yeah. you can't even complain about that because the flat dark earth one is a million times worse. Yeah. They couldn't color match it because that would uh, that that would cost four thousand dollars, and people <laughs> people wouldn't be able to be Stockholm out of that much money. Yeah. Feel great on the teeth. Here, you try it with your teeth. Yeah, my teeth, my teeth. <laughs> the like the immediate thing. This thing is so front heavy. Yeah. There's like if you hold the gun butt with one hand, ridiculously uncomfortable. Plus, it's an A2 grip, which really, 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 really doesn't help. So smooth though. When it comes to racking it, got it smooth. Yep. Man, terribly unpleasant to be next. To. It's a. Uh, it's, uh, you, the, the, I guess it's just because it's so much lighter than the M14. Yeah. It's smooth, but man, you come way off. Yeah. Even, even you, with even with a honking brake held on by a jam nut. Right. It's uh, It moves you around quite a bit. But coming off of the M14, do your teeth feel weird? Yeah. This is this is a worse tooth feel. Yeah. yeah it certainly it has an interesting mouth feel. For as it. much travel as that bolt has, you'd really you'd really expect it to like not bottom out as much. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if like. Putting big springs in this gun is like a verboten thing, but that's what I'd think it would need is like make this hard instead of this feeling like a feels like a 2011. It's so smooth, but right. it shouldn't be. Yep, I agree. Bad gun. Bad gun. Yep. But all right, guys. Scar 17s. Bad gun, not the worst, but it's bad a bad gun. gun. It's a bad, bad gun, gun, and you're stupid for build, basing your personality off. Yeah, of it. That, that's true. Yep. All right. Till next time, y'all take care.